Hey there. Welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about the area of a triangle. And you go, yes, but I already know that. I know, but I'm going to make this a lot easier for you. You see, when we talk about the area of a triangle, you need to know a couple things about it. You need to know the base and you need to know the height. If it's not a right triangle, you'd have to know what this distance is in order to find the area of a triangle until today. Um, after today, we're going to be able to find the area of a triangle without knowing the height if we know two sides and an angle between it, or if we know all three sides. This sounds a lot like the law of cosines. Yes, it does, for a very good reason. Uh, because we're going to use a substitution that takes into account um, this right triangle right here, we're going to simplify the area of a triangle into using two sides and an angle between it because of that, or all three sides because of that reason. And so if this, if your triangle satisfies law of cosines, you can find the area without explicitly knowing the height. So we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, we'll prove the area of a triangle here really quickly. We'll do a substitution to figure out the angle or the area if you know two sides and an angle between. And then we'll use something called Heron's formula um, to find the area of a triangle if you know all three sides. So let's start with this. How in the world do you find the area of a triangle? Well, the idea behind the area of a triangle is if you can make the area of a rectangle, it's pretty easy to find. So let's suppose we have this triangle with a height of H and a base of B. And the B goes all the way across this. Then maybe we double this triangle and make a rectangle. Double this triangle and make a rectangle. The area of the full rectangle, the whole dotted thing with this base, would be base times height. So that would be the area of the entire rectangle. However, how did we figure out that area? Well, we doubled this triangle, put it here. We doubled this triangle, put it here. So the area of the rectangle is twice what this triangle would be. And so if we divide by two or multiply by one half, we're going to get the area of that triangle. How we use, what letter we use to represent the area is sometimes K. So we're going to say K is the area of our, of our triangle. and it would be one half base times height. That's where our area for a triangle comes from in the first place. Now, what if we knew two sides and an angle between it? What if we didn't actually know the height? Is there a way that we could figure out the area from knowing two sides and an angle between it? Wouldn't you love it if one of those times I was like, nope, we can't, end of video, this is it. Never, <laughs> not gonna happen. Um, but let's go ahead and here's what we're gonna try. Let's suppose that we use this formula. We would know the base, we'd know the side, but what if we don't know the height? Is there a way that we can make a substitution? So let's start with that. Area of a triangle is one half base times height. What would we know if we knew two sides and an angle between? We'd know this side, we'd know this side, we'd know the angle, we would not know the height. But wait a second. What that height does is creates a right triangle. Here, here, and that angle with our H create a right triangle. Let's go ahead and set that up. Now, what would, what would we know in that right triangle? We wouldn't know this base. Why? Because that base is the whole entire thing. I don't know where this comes, so I don't know that. But I would know the angle and this particular side. Oh my gosh, if this is a right triangle and identify the angle that I know am given or am referencing, I can identify my hypotenuse. I can identify the, the side opposite my angle. Then I can identify the side adjacent. Then what this is, don't look at this guy, but look at this guy. If you know two sides and an angle between, then your height creates a right triangle you would still know this angle of the right triangle. You would still know the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So what trig function would rep represent that? Any trig function not including adjacent. That would be sine. And so we can use sine of the angle between the sides that we know equals opposite over hypotenuse. I hope you're seeing that. I hope you're seeing the right triangle there and that sine of angle C equals opposite over hypotenuse. We don't want to use the B because we don't know 
the, well, this side doesn't end here. It goes the whole way. We have no idea what that adjacent side is. We would know knowing two sides and angle between that angle and the hypotenuse. We don't know the height. And that's the whole point of the next step that we're doing. If we don't know the height, finding this area would be really difficult. But if we know this angle and that side, maybe we can solve for height. Maybe we can use that to substitute. So let's multiply both sides by A. This says that the height of that triangle is going to be given for sure by A, the hypotenuse, times sine of angle C. This is true. This is just right triangle trigonometry. Now let's substitute it. This H is the same as this H. So if we don't know what that H is, we can substitute this in there. So the, the triangle, the area of that triangle is one half B times H. But instead of H, I'm going to use this with a little bit of uh, switching the multiplication because that's commutative. We get the area of that triangle is one half A times B, the whole B, not just this little part, the whole B times sine of the angle between them. That's pretty impressive. So using a little right triangle trigonometry, we can get around the fact we don't know H because we could find it with some right triangle trig. So if you had to do this on your own without this formula, you'd have to drop a, a, a height. You'd have to figure out what this angle is, what the, that side is, do your sign, which would be horribly hard. Then you'd have your height. This formula does it all at once for you. We've just made a substitution to make it nicer. So there's, there's really three instances. We have area is one half A times B times sine C. We can have A times C times sine B. We can have B times C times sine A. Um, all it really is is one half the two sides that you know times sine of the angle between them. That's the concept. I'm going to write up the formulas, but that's the concept. So there's our formulas. Remember, this only works if you know two sides with an angle between, because that's the only way we'd be able to figure out the height with our sine function. So this is for a side angle side knowledge of a triangle. Uh, what it says, it, the concept of it is, man, area of a triangle is still one half something, but we're being kind of smart with the substitution. So it's one half multiply the sides and sine of the angle between the sides that you know. That's why you need to know two sides and the angle between. That, that's all this says, multiply the sides, times sine of the angle between those two sides. Have one half of that and you have the area of your triangle. So I'm going to come back. I'm just going to do two examples um, of this and then we'll move on to our knowing three sides and finding the area of a triangle. All right, let's get after it. So we have this triangle. I don't know if it's right triangle. I don't care. Um, all we really need to know to find the area is in general a base times a height. Now if we don't know a height, if we know two sides and an angle between, we can find the area of that triangle. So all we've got to do is take one half times the two sides and sine of the angle between them. If you need to label this as A, B, and C, that's absolutely fine. Um, you don't really need to, but you, you could if you need the formula. That would be A, A, maybe this is B, that would be lowercase b. If this is C, then this is lowercase c. Um, honestly though, the formulas are more of a concept. One half times the two sides and sine of the angle between them. So one of the sides, the other of the sides, sine of the angle between them. No matter how this is oriented, you can always find area of a triangle that way. One half the two sides that you know, or any two sides you know, times sine of the angle between. If we do this, let's see, sine of 30 degrees is one half. Uh, that's going to give you three. So the area of this triangle is three square units. Is that nice? Yeah, you bet it's nice. That's that's really great because you don't have to use right triangle trigonometry and then do something else with it. It's all in one. That's really all there is to it. We've already done the right triangle trigonometry and did the substitution so that this was possible. All right, we have one last one with our side angle side. I'm looking at this. I'm trying to find the area of a triangle. I don't really know the height. Uh, how would you find the height? You have to draw a perpendicular right here. 
and find the height of that, or draw one here and extend that. You do both cases, um, but really it's a lot nicer. If this fits law of cosines, you can use an area formula for it. So the area of a triangle says all we really need to know is all three sides or two sides and an angle between. I know that. I know two sides and an angle between. So if you want to label this as A, A, B, B, C and lowercase c, that's fine. Our area is going to give us one half times, multiply those sides together. So four times one, or one times four, times sine of the angle between them, which is 120 degrees. Now, one half times one times four is just two. And sine of 120 degrees, let's see, that's square root of three over two. which leaves us with just the square root of 3, or about 1.73 if you want to approximate. I hope that makes sense. I hope that explained uh, the area of a triangle really nicely. If, you've, if, if you have two sides and you know an angle between them, it's not all that bad. We've just done a substitution. So if it fits the law of cosines, you can do it. If you need the formula, great. If you're a concept person, then um, just if you know the two sides and the angle between, it's multiply the sides times one half and sine of the angle between them. So let's take a look at what happens if you know all three sides. Okay, so last little concept here. Let's suppose that you know all three sides of a triangle. Can you find the area? Yes, you can, but it does involve a special formula. It's called Heron's formula. The idea is add up your sides and multiply it by one half. This is going to give you a value called s. Then take that value inside of a square root, s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. It, it is a process. I'm not going to prove it for you, but it does work if you know all three sides of your right triangle to figure out the area pretty concisely. Um, otherwise, you would it would take a lot of work. Um, to actually do this. So you need quite a bit of trigonometry to figure out that area. So let's go through it. Um, the ideas again is there's a part one and there's a part two. Figure out S first. Think of S as half the perimeter. So S says add everything up and divide by two or multiply by one half. So we would do that now. It doesn't matter the order, of course, in which you add them, but you do need to add everything together before you divide by two. So that looks like we're going to have, oh, let's see, one half of 19, which would be 9.5. So we're going to find this quantity S, the half of the perimeter first. After that, we can find the area. All we're going to do is take K equals or area equals the square root. And inside that, we're going to start with S, so 9.5. And then we're going to continue to multiply by S minus each of the three sides. It does not matter the order. So 9.5 minus 9, 9.5 minus 6, 9.5 minus 4, or any sort of permutation of those. For an exact answer, you actually could put square root of 91.4375. I haven't rounded that. Um, but really, in your calculators, normally we would just put this all, all in. Square root of, use your parentheses appropriately. And then when you take that square root, it's going to give you about oh, 9.56. So 9.56 square units, whatever that is. It's kind of a nice way to find the area. If you know all three sides, it's, it's at least very quick. So find S. It's half the perimeter then square root of s, and then s minus each of your sides multiplied together. Okay, last one. So you should probably try that on your own. Um, just see if you can go through Heron's formula, see if you can figure out s, and then use s in your area formula. So for us, we've got s is half the perimeter, so add this up. That would be 1 half of 9 plus 8 plus 5 in any order that you want. So let's see, that's oh, 17 plus 5 is 22, half of that is 11. So S is 11.
Our area formula says take the s, multiply times s minus each of those sides in succession, multiply it all together and take the square root. If we do that, 11 times 11 minus 9 times 11 minus 8 times 11 minus 5, we're going to get 396 as a radicand, the inside of that square root. If we take a square root, it's about 19.9. About Nineteen point nine square units, whatever that is, that's still an area. I hope this made sense. I hope that I've explained to you well enough that if something fits law of cosines, you can find the area of that triangle pretty easily with one of these formulas. Um, so we're multiplying one half times two sides and sine of the angle between, or we're adding them up, multiplying by one half to figure out s and square root of that s times s minus each of those three sides. That's about it. That's how we can find area without having to know the height. I hope it's made sense to you, and I will see you for another video. We're going to go on to some harmonic motion.